what's up it's michelle and i'm back with another video and this is actually going to be one of the very first episodes to my podcast as well she still got faith so um i felt called to come and share this message especially with such a horrific holiday that is coming up very soon i feel like god is like you need to get this message out here like people do not know my people do not know so I definitely wanted to come in on here and share this message, but before I get into the message, I want to let you guys know just a little bit more about the podcast. So I decided to start a podcast called She Still Got Faith. This is going to be a podcast that I'm going to be sharing a little bit more about uh, going through the Bible with you guys. This is something that um, I feel like everyone needs to do and I have a confession to make. I have never read the Bible from start to finish, start to finish. Now I know certain scriptures, I can, you know, look up scriptures for when I'm feeling a certain way and I, I need clarity on things like that. I've always done that, but from start to finish, I've never read the Bible and I am challenging myself to do it. And I feel like God has also challenged me to do this along with other people who have probably never read the Bible as well. And we can go through this together. So in this podcast, I'm also going to be doing this as well. And I'm also going to be reading the scriptures aloud, talking about it, and we'll discuss it on this podcast. I'm also going to be sharing with you ways to grow your business. Um, if you are an entrepreneur via using scripture as well. So I'm really excited about this podcast. It's more of a faith-based, a lifestyle-based podcast. Um, and I can't wait to share this with you guys. So this is going to be the very first episode. And I do encourage you guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, to go ahead and check it out on Apple. Also, it's going to be on Spotify as well. And go ahead and leave a rating, a review for it as well. And share this message with as many people as you can. And let's go ahead and get right into the first episode. So, um, I don't know about you guys, but... I grew up going to church, okay? And I'll probably do another whole entire episode that goes a little bit deeper into this. But I grew up going to church. I went to uh, a Baptist church when I was a little girl, like itty baby, before I can even remember, all the way till I was probably about like 10 or 11. And then um, my mom started going to, or my dad, because at that particular time, it was just my mom that was going to this Baptist church. My dad never really went to church. He would always just stay at home. He didn't, he didn't really too much care for the church to be quite honest, but, um, so he didn't go to that church. And so my mom stopped going to that church and we decided to start going to a church that was literally right across the street. Um, there was someone that came and, um, was, you know, evangelizing and stuff like that. And they shared, you know, the word of God. And I think my dad actually answered the door and we started attending that church and my parents have been going ever since. Now, mostly my mom goes, but, uh, and I will occasionally vision, visit there, but we went there all the way until, you know, I became grown and stuff like that. So moral of the story is I used to go there. So I'm very familiar with the word of God. Um, but I can say with us going to church and everything like that, we, I personally, as a child, never really felt like there was anything wrong with celebrating Halloween because my parents would still allow me to go out, go trick-or-treating, go to Halloween parties and things like that, dress up in costumes. We would go shopping at Party City for costumes and things like that. So with me growing up, you know, participating in Halloween and carving pumpkins and all that stuff like that and putting pumpkins out and stuff like that. Now there's nothing wrong with just putting pumpkins pumpkins out itself, but far as like p carving pumpkins and stuff like that, there's a lot more that goes into that. But putting pumpkins out if you like fall decor, I personally still put out fall decor because I love fall. But Halloween decor specifically, I do not participate in that at all. And my parents allowed me to, so I saw nothing wrong with that. And so when I had my children, up until my kids were about, I want to say Ayana was about five and my twins were about four, I allowed them to go trick-or-treating and dress up in costume because I'm like, oh my God, they're so cute. Let me dress them up, blah, blah, blah. I would make costumes, things like that, not thinking anything of it. And then one year, 
I just felt like something is just not right with me participating in it. And I decided, you know what, I'm not going to participate in it at all. And at this time, I didn't know the origins that went behind this. But I was just like, you know what, I don't think we're going to participate. And I'm going to let the girls go at all this year. And I was feeling bad because they were like, oh, well, we're not going to get any candy and stuff like that. And I'm like, oh, my God, I'm a horrible mom because I'm not letting my kids go trick or treat and get this free candy. But it's like, Michelle, you can go buy candy any day of the year. Why is it such a big deal to go get free candy from people who you don't know? Like on a day to day basis, would you allow your kids to just go up to somebody's house and be like, hey, can I have some candy? Like, no, you're going to just go to the store and like get the candy that you need. For your kid and call it a day you know you're not going to be feeling bad about not allowing your kids to get free candy on a day like on any other day out of the year so i personally felt like you know i went after the last the last year that we participated going into the the next year i was like okay we're not participating at all i just it doesn't feel right it just really didn't feel right to me I didn't really know the origins at this time, but it didn't feel right. And I want to say like that following year, I actually watched a YouTube video because I got curious around that time of year. Like, what are the origins of Halloween? Like, why do people participate in it? What's the true story behind it? Like, what's the big deal around it? Why is it always so much dead stuff around it? And so I watched a couple YouTube videos about it and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, mm, yeah. And I'm a follower of Christ, so I definitely should not be participating in, in this. But I can honestly say still as me being a follower of Christ in this particular time span that I'm talking about, I'm still very much a lukewarm Christian. I can be very transparent in that. So I just knew it wasn't right. So I knew the origins of it. And I'm going to kind of go into a little bit of the origins of it. So I want to give you a little bit of background history so you guys can kind of just understand a little bit of what you are signing up for when you're participating in this. So the origins of Halloween comes from the Celtic culture. Um, you can look this up for yourself. I'm just gonna kind of give you guys a brief, but it comes from the Celtic culture. Um, they used to have a festival that was called Shawin um, that they would participate in. And for this, it marked the end of the summer and the beginning of like, you know, the darkest season of the year, which is winter and, you know, when the time would change and things like that. So it marked that for them. Um, the darkest and the coldest seasons of the year. So um, on this particular day, the Celtics and the pagans and witches and warlocks and things like that, they believed that on this particular day that the veil was like the thinnest between life and death so that the dead would rise up and they could roam the earth and seek vengeance or complete any unfinished business that they may have on earth. They was thinking that and that they would be able to you know converse with their loved ones because the veil was super thin but let me go ahead and let you guys know this we as followers of christ know that the dead know nothing in ecclesiastes 9 and 5 it says for the living know that they shall die but the dead know not anything neither have they any more reward for the memory of them is forgotten meaning that the dead know nothing they are not on this earth roaming they know nothing that's going on on this earth so if the dead know nothing then who is it that you are summoning up on this day demons okay familiar spirits another scripture is um in psalms 146 and 4 it says his breath goeth forth <laughs> That was a tongue twister. He returneth to his earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. And then it also says in Ephesians 6 and 12, that for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against rulers and against authorities and against cosmic powers over the present darkness against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. We know that we are not wrestling with flesh and blood and flesh and blood would also be people who have passed on we are wrestling against demonic forces that are not visible to our eye for us to be able to see and there is spiritual warfare all over so with that being said we do know during that time that the celtics believed that the veil was the thinnest and that spirits were roaming the earth that those were not spirits those were demons and you have to be very careful when it comes to interactions with demons okay because they do lie also so when it comes to like the origins of like the costumes and things like that uh costumes were pretty much created so that on this particular day where they felt like the veil was like the thinnest that they would be uh the people would be able to blend in 
with the Roman spirits that they were seeing because they didn't want to be attacked or, you know, have them come into their home or anything like that. So they would wear these costumes so that they would be able to blend in and the spirits would pass them over because they would think that they were one of them, right? So they would dress up in like, you know, ghosts, and like ghosts and goblins and things like that. So they would blend in and they would pass them right over because the spirits or the demons would think that they were one of them. During this time period, people also believed that if you, you know, when you dressed up in these costumes and things like that, that you were able to take on the powers of whatever dead person that you were wearing, whatever, you know, costume that you were wearing you'd be able to, to get those powers on this specific day and be as powerful as whoever you're portraying on this specific day and also in today's culture a lot of the costumes do have a lot of spiritual perversion all over especially when you look at a lot of like the nun costumes that are now scantily clad or the nurse costumes that are barely nurse costumes because there's barely any fabric covering anything so we know that there's a lot of perversion that's taking place on this day even though that you may think that it's innocent and it's no big deal when you are putting on these costumes you are changing your identity and with you changing your identity you are giving the enemy legal access to you and that is not something me personally that i want to give the enemy he has no access and no right to me at all a little bit more about this holiday that the church did try to transform this holiday at one particular point by calling it all saints day and with them calling it all saints day they thought that they were taking back the holiday because now the church can participate in it by wearing saint costumes of saints who have passed on and things like that but so with this the church was wearing costumes of the saints to take back the holiday and make it okay and make it okay for the church to participate but even though that um the costumes that they were wearing were saints they're still celebrating and idolizing the dead so this is something that you still should not be participating in because we should not have any idols at all. Another thing that I found quite interesting is that the creator of the Church of Satan was actually quoted saying that he is so happy that Christians allow their children to worship the devil at least one day out of the year. Now let that sink in. Let that sink in. Do you think that a Satanist would be in the church worshiping when we celebrate Passover? Do you think that they would be in the church for that one day out of the year? And you think the devil will be okay with, you know, a Satanist, you know, celebrating this day, one day out of the year? Absolutely not, okay? So why are we so okay with dressing our kids up for one day out of the year and thinking that our God is going to be okay with us dressing our children up and ourselves up in these costumes and worshiping the devil and participating in deadly activities because we know that this day is, is full of death, it's full of horror, it's full of sacrifices, it's full of fear. And our God is not about any of that. Our God is a God of life. He's a God of love. He's a God of mercy, glory. He is everything that the enemy is not. And for the devil to try to make this holiday look so innocent, and so fun to the point that Christians are okay with allowing their children and themselves to participate in these holidays. It just shows you that he is one of the greatest tricksters and he's good at what he does. On this particular day, you can probably ask any cop that, and they would pretty much tell you that on this day, you will see the highest amount of murders, child sacrifices, animal sacrifices, rituals, um, kidnapping, trafficking on this day in particular, it is at its highest because there are so many people out here and they can easily be snatched up. So you really have to be careful um, with participating in this. So I am not here to throw this down your throat or preach at you, but I do want to say you have to be very careful with what you are align aligning yourself with. Everything that glitters is not gold. If it looks innocent and fun and it's of this world why would you want to participate in it mainly because we are not of this world we should not be participating in things of this world we should be set apart 
in participating in this holiday, a worldly holiday, is not something that I believe that us as followers of Christ should be doing. So I'm going to leave you guys with a few scriptures to reflect on so you guys can go to God and get clarity by yourself on this as well. Because uh, I know for me, I had a feeling that, okay, yeah, I don't think this is right. And then eventually I found scriptures and things like that. And I watched the origins of these uh, of this holiday. But I feel like I, if you have the scripture to kind of like back this up, this will help you find that clarity that you need. So I'm going to go ahead and give you guys some scriptures that I found that will just really kind of let you guys know that, that maybe this is not something that you should be participating in and I highly suggest that you go to God you go in prayer you ask God if this is something that you should participate in and if you should allow your children to as well so the first scripture that I have for you is uh, Leviticus 19 and 31 says regard them not that have familiar spirits neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them I am the Lord your God. First Corinthians 10 and 20 says, but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to participate with demons. You cannot drink from the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot have part in both the Lord's table and the table of demons. And then Romans 12 and two says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. I hope you guys find clarity in this, and I hope this message touches someone if you are thinking about participating in Halloween activities with yourself and your children. You really have to protect yourselves right now. Spiritual warfare is at its highest right now, especially now with things being able to be transmitted a lot faster with the internet. So protect yourself at all costs. And I pray that you guys go to God with this and you get the clarity that you need to figure out what's best for you. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and this podcast. If you have, be sure to share this message. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you are here on YouTube and go ahead and check me out on Spotify and Apple as well. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.